Hey folks, we've got a brand new NX update for y'all. NX 20.3 is here. NX 20.3 launched just in time for Christmas 2024. Let's go over all the highlights. We also went over a lot of these highlights in a live stream that we did last month. I'll put a link to that in the description below. And here's all the topics we'll hit, all the things we'll talk about inside of this video and all the things that landed in 20.3. We'll make sure to add chapters for each one of these as well if you want to skip ahead to the ones that you're most interested in. But let's go ahead and get started with TypeScript project references and workspaces support. Prior to this change, the way that NX generators and plugins work when you set up things using NX, we would support import statements like this, import foo from a named package would actually use path aliases to do this. So this is a feature from TypeScript uh, using the paths compiler option where we would create a dictionary that would allow you to point a certain project name like this right here at myspace slash my project to a specific barrel file to represent this project for you as NX would set it up. With this update, we're changing the way that this works. Rather than aliasing this with TypeScript, instead what we're going to do going forward is use workspaces support in order to mark to your workspace where all of your packages live. All right, so, so to show you how we do things now, we'll create a new NX workspace uh, with the TypeScript preset. This is, well, this is where you can see as of 20.3, the new project references and workspaces support by default. Uh, we'll go ahead and create that. Uh, You'll notice because I used npx to run this command, NX is going to use npm as your package manager. So we're going to set up workspaces support for the npm package manager. If we were to use pnpx, for example, we would set it up for pnpm workspaces. We can also use this with the dash dash pm or package manager option and set that to yarn or however we want. All right, so the first thing to note now that we have this set up is that we now have a workspaces field set up in our root package.json file. So any package that we find inside of the libs or packages directory, NPM is going to tie those together so we can name them via the package.json for that specific package. Let's go ahead and create a new library so we can see how that's set up. So to do that, we'll run the command nxg lib packages slash is even. We use TSC and just defaults here. Now we should see inside of our packages directory, our is even package, inside of the package JSON here, we'll see we set it up with a name to match what we would normally put in the paths of our TS config. You'll also notice inside of our TS config, we've created a path references here at the TypeScript level. This way, TypeScript will recognize this path right here, our packages slash is even, where NX just created that package, to know that this is a project at the TypeScript level as well. So TypeScript now knows the boundaries of your different packages. And those boundaries will allow TypeScript to have more enhancements when it comes to memory and speed when building your TypeScript packages. As we saw, this is now available using the TypeScript preset. You can also use this now as of 20.3 with all of our presets as well, with the exception of Angular. Angular should be coming soon. But for now, all of our React and Vue and Node presets should work with this new functionality as long as you provide the dash dash workspaces flag right here as we can see on screen. We will be making this the default at a later date, so keep an eye out for that. And as I mentioned earlier, we will also be adding this for our Angular presets as well. If you want to weigh on the discussion, uh, here's a link to our RFC, so go ahead and weigh in on GitHub if you have any opinions here. We'll move on. All right, so up next is RSPack update. So our at NX slash RSPack plugin has upgraded from labs to our main repo now. And we also have a new dedicated plugin for RS build. So with the latest improvements, our RSPack plugin is now at feature parity with our at NX webpack plugin, which should make it easier for teams to migrate from webpack to RSPack now very easily and take advantage of significant performance gains. So this is a big deal because RSPack is a next generation bundler based on the Webpack bundler. They actually use the same exact test suite as Webpack to make sure they're at parity with Webpack. 
And because it's built with Webpack in mind, all Webpack plugins are backwards compatible to RSPack. So anyone using our Webpack now can easily move from Webpack to RSPack and without changing their build, get huge performance gains in terms of time. Now, RS Build is a product that the RS team has built on top of RS Pack that's meant to be uh, almost Vite like in terms of having much more streamlined config and not having to get in the weeds with you know managing plugins yourself like you would with Webpack. So, to support this, we have a new uh, generator that you can run using the NXG uh, at NX slash RS build configuration is the name of the generator, which will create the configuration required for you to uh, take any existing reactor view application and make it now work with RS build. Similarly, whenever you're creating a new application using the react or view uh, first party application generators, you'll see in the list of bundlers RS build now as an option. So you can opt into RS build uh, by selecting it there. Uh, you can also use, you know, Vite or Webpack, I believe are still in those dropdown options. So you can still select the ones you want. And for more on RS Pack support, be sure to check out our live streams we've had in the past with Column on module federation with RS Pack and setting up Angular with RS Pack. Uh, it's not as simple, so we don't have first party support for it, but check out this live stream to see how uh, Column can set it up for Angular. We also have two live streams that we did with RS Pack and RS Build creator uh, Zach Jackson. Uh, see, we talked about bundlers in general, the history of bundlers and all that cool stuff, and also how RS Pack and RS Build and also some new exciting stuff like RS Lib is coming up from the RS team and how they're looking to uh, really shape the future of bundlers going forward. So go be sure to check that out. So next up is a new feature that we have for NX console that we are really excited about. And that is when you are using the NX console VS code plugin and you are assigned into the plugin to NX cloud, whenever we see that a branch you have worked on recently has a CI pipeline associated with it, we'll actually give you a status inside of the NX console sidebar that will show you the status of any of those PRs, uh, if they're still pending and what they're, what they're working on. And most importantly, as we can see in this little clip here, when the CI pipeline completes, you'll see this little notification pop up on your screen. Clicking the button on it will take you to NX Cloud, where you can see full details on what all happened inside of that pipeline, which is really cool. The biggest thing, though, is just that notification popping up, letting you know that the pipeline is finished. So you can go ahead and quickly merge your PR in or take whatever necessary steps you need to to get that PR in the correct state. I've been using this one myself. It's been super helpful. So on the topic of NX Cloud, we have more NX Cloud enhancements to talk about. Uh, the first one is the affected graph is now available on NX Cloud on a per PR basis. So we did a video on this. I'll make sure to include that in the description below. But since we can, let's just take a look at it live real quick. I'll take a look at this from one of my side projects that I have up here. This is the run for one of my PRs. Let's take a look right here. We can see the affected project graph. So as you can see, this actually gives me a heads up view of sort of the architecture of my application and how it is structured and specifically what this PR affected. So as we can see, this was a fairly wide reaching change uh, for my little side project here. So we are looking at the NF graph, the composite view of this, which is going to automatically group things by directory. So I have a lot of projects here inside of my slash UI directory. We can expand that right here to see a little bit more of what's going on. We can collapse that to make it easier to see at a glance, kind of drill in on the different things to see what the different libraries are here that were affected, how they depend on each other, and that kind of thing. So potentially a very helpful tool for you in terms of taking a uh, PR review, for example, and just giving yourself context for what this PR affected. Now, in addition to the affected project graph on all of your PRs, we now also have support for assignment rules. So an assignment rule is a declarative way of adding nuance to your CI pipelines. Looking at this example that we see here, we're actually giving our pipeline six total machines, three small ones, two mediums, and one large one. 
So because our app one has a very intensive build, we want to make sure that this runs either on the large or the medium that we're provisioning for this pipeline. So this is a potentially very exciting way of keeping your CI pipelines declarative so you don't have to overmanage them while being able to add nuance when needed to accommodate things like this particular build requiring a lot of resources. And there's a whole bunch of other use cases where this could be very handy as well. So we're still exploring a lot of that. Uh, this feature is still in beta, but it's available now on NX Cloud. So go give it a shot. All right, next up, we have support for the new Angular major version, Angular 19. To migrate any NX workspace with Angular 18 projects to the most recent version, Angular 19, you can run the NX migrate command. So by running the command that you see on screen here, we're going to find out all the latest migrations for you. You would then run NX migrate dash dash run dash migrations to apply those migrations across your workspace. This should put you on Angular 19 and layer over any breaking changes that came with the new major version. Now, if you ever want to migrate an X to the latest version, but not Angular for some reason, you can always use the dash dash interactive flag. This will actually prompt you as to which libraries you wish to migrate. So you can choose to migrate NX and TypeScript, but just not Angular yet if you so choose. Keep in mind too, because Angular 19 is out. This means Angular 16 has now fallen out of LTS. So NX is no longer supporting Angular 16 going forward. All right, up next, we're going to talk about some of the core performance improvements that came in 20.3. So generally, there was a significant new feature that we added in NX version 18, uh, which is inferred task plugins. So we had referred to this as Project Crystal in a lot of our content we've put out in the past. And in the months after this feature came out, there were some larger performance issues that we had been focusing on addressing. As of NX20, a lot of the larger issues had been addressed. So now we can focus in more on the fine grain nuances and making that experience better. Uh, one of these is if you are using a local inferred task plugin and that plugin is written in TypeScript, we've drastically improved the performance of those plugins working without having to write them in JavaScript, without having to build them and now simply write them in TypeScript, include that inside of your plugins, inside of your nx.json file, and it should run just about as fast as if you were running a JavaScript file. We've also built in spinners into the terminal UI. So you can see we have here a custom plugin that's going to just add a delay into uh, constructing your project graph, which is a terrible plugin. But as you can see, there's a little spinner here. And this spinner is going to let us know that we're creating graph nodes for this specific plugin, the delay.ts file that we can see here. So this is particularly helpful for instances in the past where we had just seen the terminal seeming like it's stalling out when there are potentially plugins there that may have some performance issues that need to be addressed. This will give you the proper feedback that this is what's taking a while and you can address those or at least give you some feedback that, that your task hasn't failed. We're just taking a while to process the project graph. All right, next up is updates for NX Power Pack. NX Power Pack is a suite of premium or paid extensions to the NX CLI, and it enables some features like conformance, which is lint style rules across your entire monorepo, owners, which is a way of specifying specific developers or groups of developers to specific projects inside of the monorepo, and also a self-hosted remote cache as an alternative to NX Cloud. So recently, we've added support for Azure and Google Cloud Storage as supported providers. Now, these are in addition to S3, which was the first one that we prioritized when we launched PowerPack. In addition to S3, we now support all S3 compatible providers such as MinIO, LocalStack, DigitalOcean Spaces, and Cloudflare. So in addition to these new capabilities, we've also added the capability to allow folks to authenticate their PowerPack license via NX Cloud rather than committing a license to your repo. This should enable especially open source library authors to use PowerPack without exposing their private license in the side of their repo. As a note too, we are also offering free PowerPack licenses to all open source libraries. And we also offer free licenses to smaller businesses so if you're interested to see if you qualify, you can go ahead and click this link. This will take you to our automated form for a NX Power Pack subscription. 
So you can see for small businesses, if you are approved, the license is free, provided that you qualify after a short conversation with our team. All right, one last thing here, and this has not landed yet, but we have a RFC that's a request for comments for our next major feature that will be coming soon, and this is infinite tasks. We've referred to this in the past as long-running tasks. So this is where you can specify that certain tasks depend on other long-running tasks. For example, serving your front-end application depends on the serve of your back-end application, or serving your back-end application depends on your database running, or testing the publish of your library depends on Verdashio running. So I'm in particular very excited for this plan. I've been wanting this for a long time. I know a lot of our users are excited about this too. If you want to weigh in, check out the RFC and we'll wrap it up on that. Uh, check out the links where you can see for more. Check out the links in the description if you want to dive into any of the things we discussed. In general, this is a great update, I think. Keep working hard, y'all, and we'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.